So I'm just going to click DI. I want to take it from the center if I want to, or if you don't want to take it from the center, tab, tab what you want. If you, you know, hover over where you want. So I remember being introduced to Revit right after learning SketchUp. And one thing about SketchUp is I promise you it has the easiest interface. When I first saw it, I said, whoa, this is pretty simple. It was so simple to find out everything. First graders use SketchUp um, and, and play with SketchUp in school. Not to say that SketchUp doesn't do tremendous work in in, in, in buildings and commercial buildings and residential buildings aren't built off of SketchUp drawings. That, I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that it has a very, very simple interface compared to Revit. Um, that being said, top four ways to master Revit. Number one, learn the interface. It is so important. Like I said, when I first saw this interface in, in Revit, it was intimidating. And even though I was already familiar with AutoCAD, I had used AutoCAD through, through high school, I was very familiar with AutoCAD. And seeing Revit, it was totally different. And there was so much to it, and there were so many things you could do. And I went from using AutoCAD in high school, just 2D, no 3D, you know, and learning that Revit has these, these has these, these 3D capabilities is, is just amazing. And it was amazing at the time. And I think at the time, uh, Chief Architect I got familiar with, which is which was very similar to Revit. I don't know if it took off as well. Um, you know, I learned Form Z, it's kind of familiar, kind of similar. You know, Rhino is a little more complicated or and, and to me, if you ask me, but for Revit, learning and learn the interface. The course I took on Revit um, when I first got to college, it was one semester. My teacher, who was an architect at the time, um, still an architect, he told us, okay, first day of class, everybody, um, we had Revit on our desktops, and he said, learn the interface. I want you guys to just, the entire class, this is all you're going to do. Click through the tabs and see what everything does. That simple. And at the time, it didn't seem simple. It was like, well, we can't ask questions. Like, what the heck? Okay, architecture, structure, steel, systems. Just go through and see what it does. And that's the best way to learn Revit for me. That's how I learned it. And just for instance, I remember, I remember the first thing I did. Let me just go ahead and click in here. Let me make sure my window is okay. So I got room over here. Um, I'm in this viewport. First thing I clicked on was wall. Okay. Clicked wall. And there was a lot of default walls here. Um, these walls here are walls that I created for this job specifically, but let's see, I think it was exterior CMU. Yeah. I remember in CMU insulated wall. And I just said, okay, I, I click the wall and I have my cursor in here and I just click. I just drug it out. I just clicked one time and said, oh, okay. So I want to make something 20 feet. I don't remember what, at the time what I made it. And then when I clicked it once, I noticed it was still, it was still dragging 18 feet. Let's just go ahead and complete this here. And I created my first wall. That's the first thing I did in Revit. Nothing special. I just made four walls. And clicking on these walls, I'm like, what is this thing? Change walls orientation. So when you hover over things in Revit, it tells you what it is. And I said, hmm, that's interesting. And I clicked it and notice it flipped to the other side. I said, okay, so this flips, flips the wall. And it automatically sparked my interest. I wanted to see this in 3D because I know Revit has 3D capabilities. So I went searching for how to get a 3D view of this. 
and I remember just looking through all these tabs and somehow I found my way up here to this little house default 3d view and I said hmm let me just click on it see what it does clicked on it hey there's my walls my walls are here now I didn't have all of this when I first started this was years ago um, but I had something just like this these four walls and I'm clicking on it and I said okay and I'm looking around and actually at the time my my detail level was not on fine and I realized that having it on fine is very very helpful and I'll show you again in 2d too but it was on course I think automatically it's on course and, and I'll show you in 2d real quick of course you don't get a lot of detail okay you just get this here which at the time I thought was okay but I do remember at the time um, learning and knowing also that you know there's more detail if you're cutting into a wall you're gonna see insulation things like that and then I learned that detail level course down here next to the scale you put that on fine and it gives you way more detail and just by starting architecture wall I got curious about how to figure out other things and this is how I learned Revit and it, this, this is how it works and I think this works for any program I've done this same thing with Rhino Form Z all types of programs so back to 3d so I'm looking in here and I'm saying okay this is the outside obviously the inside is showing brick it's showing the brick on this one it shows the brick on the outside the inside is not showing anything or the inside is not showing anything there on these other three walls it's not showing anything but it's showing the brick on the inside let's go back here okay so that's it's showing it outside there inside inside oh it makes sense this is the exterior and I select them all to show on the outside I go back and it shows me that my brick is now on the outside that's how I learned that and I learned it just probably probably not as fast as I just showed it but it just sparked my curiosity and like I said I had to go through all the tabs just looking for something specific I want to see the 3d of this and I found my way up to this house to this little house here so you know and knowing that that's something i learned you know in that first 10 15 minutes like oh this is how you or change the orientation of your walls blah 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 and and then i also noticed just clicking on the walls this intimidated me at first i remember being very intimidated seeing the properties and i said oh what is all of this this is a lot of stuff and the first thing i noticed was 20 feet and I go back to my 3D and I say, oh, is this wall 20 feet high? We're going to be designing residential uh, properties here. I'm not going to have a 20 foot wall. Um, so in 3D, while that was still selected, I just simply changed this. And I said, oh, OK, well, I want these other walls to match. And I went through and did them all one by one. But then later realize I can do it a little quicker if I just hold down control and you get the little plus sign, select them all, change them all to eight feet. Okay, now they're all eight feet. So getting familiar with the interface is probably the longest part of learning. Once you go through everything, and I mean everything, and you'll get to you'll get to systems right and say you can try these out but you really don't need them unless you're you know you can be doing a restroom or if you're getting really if you're just be, if you're beginning to learn Revit nine times out of ten you're not going to go into this but it's it's good to know it's good to learn because eventually you will eventually you will get into this but you know insert I can insert CAD files and images and all that stuff go through everything and just 
dive in. Number two is to become very familiar with quick commands and mostly used commands since I've been using Revit for work and just for fun. Um, LI for line, MV for move, DL for detail line, WA for wall, CO for copy, RO for rotate, DI for dimension. Those are very commonly used quick commands. So let's say I wanna dimension this, this space. So I'm just gonna click DI. I wanna take it from the center if I want to, or if you don't wanna take it from the center, tab. Tab what you want. If you, you know, hover over where you want. Tab, you know, say I want it from this inside here. Take it from there if you want. Get that inside. Um, but I'm gonna do center to center here. And it automatically gives me that center. Um, got your dimensions. Adding my dimensions at the time, I remember being curious saying, hmm, what if I wanna change the size and the style of my dimensions? I just clicked on the dimension and I immediately started looking up here, but then later realized that for everything, if you wanna change something, make something custom, edit something, edit type is where you go. You can come in here, uh, adjust, adjust tick, adjust tick marks, um, anything you want, change it however you want. Um, say I didn't, I didn't want this, this, these walls to be in this position. I just simply could select everything R O and I can rotate it. Now I can go by with it, what it's giving me 90, or I can stop at 45 and just click it there. Or if I want it at 55, get it to 55, click there, or I can select R O whoops, select R O I can type in 55 in that direction. And there we have it. Um, let's see right here. I'm in the, and this shouldn't be here, but um, I want to move this out of the way of this. So in the click and just move it in the click move. Let me open this up a little bit. Crop region just for just for these examples. Um, you know, I want some detail lines. Let's say let's go to DL right and let's just say i just want to show an overhead and i can go to line style and select whatever i want right let's just go to overhead and let's just say i want to offset from the center because i just want to show that there's going to be uh, a skylight here right and even though we don't have a roof but let's just say um for this 2d wall plan i want to show where this skylight is going to be located but I want it so much, I want it so many feet off of these walls. Here I have offset. Let's just do two feet, right? You're gonna, you can go up in here. You can go here and you can pick lines. Um, these are for if you wanna just draw the lines in, but we're gonna offset from these, from these edges. So I'm gonna pick line. I want to pick this inside line at 24 inches there. Just put that there and just do the same thing all the way around because we're just saying we want to show where a skylight would be. You know, this could be, we could be designing some heavy duty shed or whatever. I don't know. Um, go ahead and delete this. And there we have our overhead lines representing where that skylight is going to be. Um, um, just to use the copy tool, let's say we just want to add some more details with this, with this detail line, let's just CO, or actually we're going to click the line first, CO, and sometimes it'll be on constraint. So watch that. So while we're in CO, we can, and you can accidentally just bring it out this way, but 
if you watch, you see how this line turns blue when it's parallel. I want to go three feet. Let's do the same thing. Just copying these lines. Make sure it's blue, 36 inches. Okay, so uh, another tool that I use. So we don't want these edges. We just want this little center piece here, the center piece here, and this outer piece here representing this skylight that we have, that we haven't designed, but we're just representing this skylight or whatever. TR is another tool that I use a lot, trim. Okay, so I like this line. There are certain lines I want to trim out. There's lines I want to keep. You're going to select the line you want to keep. Okay. Same thing here. I want to keep this inside line. So I'm going to select that second. Same thing here. I want to get rid of this line and I want to keep this inside. Select the inside. This line here. I want to get rid of this line but I want to keep this inside. Gets rid of all the lines. ESC to get out of the command. So I have, you know, so I have that there. And like I said, the most common commands you're going to use, including that TR I just showed you, I should have added that to this list, but LI for line, MV for move, CO for copy, DO for detail line, RO for rotate, DI for dimension, WA for wall, and TR for trim, very commonly used. And there's others you're gonna use and others you're gonna learn. And trust me, I remember first thinking like, okay, memorizing all these lines are, it's gonna be ridiculous, it's too much. No, if you're using Revit every day, if you work for a company where you use Revit every day or any program, the commands are gonna become second nature. They're gonna become second nature. Number three, you're going to run into problems. Do not allow error signs to discourage you. I think like that first semester I took Revit, I remember getting a ton of error signs. You cannot do that. This will be deleted. I didn't use, after that class, I didn't use Revit for a while because it was intimidating. It was annoying and I couldn't figure things out. The thing is you have to work through things. So let's say I want to put, uh, I don't know. Let's put a column in here. I just select column. Well, I have this, this web shape column. Oh, I want to put it here. None of the created elements are visible in the floor plan. What, what is going on here? What, what is this? You know, one thing I learned is let's say I put it in there, right? And in the beginning, like I said, 3D became my best friend because I can go in and see everything. I said, why is it not visible? There it is right there. Why does it look like a little line? I remember I had learned about putting this to find. Oh, there it is. Well, okay, it shows there. Why is it not showing here? And I remember going back, putting the column back in and reading, none of the created elements are visible in the floor plan, main level floor plan view. You may want to check the active view, its parameters, and its visibility settings. Now you can go in as a beginner and learn about visibility settings, parameters, all that. Or what I did, I went to 3D view. I saw this here. And I saw the level, okay? Ba the base level is at the garage slab. In your properties, you can simply put this at level one, but you're gonna to have to change the top level. Just put it top of the ICF wall. And the ICF wall is a wall that we, we use for this residential building. And I say, oh, okay, it's shown here. So that means it should be shown in the main level now. Absolutely. Now it's shown. Don't let these error signs intimidate you. I remember initially seeing one 
and I saw it again and again and again, I gave up. I said, this is ridiculous, but um, work through it. There's a reason why it's giving you that error sign and figure it out and you will get through it. Another tool or another command real quick is AL and that's the align tool. So let's say I want to align this edge with this edge. I select, I select AL and I want it here. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it there. And AL, I want it in, let's say I want it in the center, right? I'm just going to draw a simple detail line. I don't care what line style it is. Just draw that out. I know that's the center of the wall. AL, the center of that detail line I created. And I'm going to get the center of this column. And I'm going to place it right there. Now I can delete that because I don't need it. And I'm thinking of other commands off the top of my head while working through this. Another command. So... I want this same column on this edge here. What I'm gonna do, so MM, or I'm gonna select it first, MM, and oh, I don't have a center to, to go off of. I can simply click this one where I can draw my center line, or I can take advantage of the command. Click this, DM, and I can draw my center line. And this, this triangle tells me that this is, a, this is the center. I'm just gonna simply draw a line and I see that that line is blue, which means I'm in the right position, the right angle. And I'm gonna click, there's my other one there. And we're gonna use CO again. Just move this out. We're gonna use AL again for a line. And I'm gonna align this with, oh, uh, I might not do it. So let's go ahead and actually rotate this. RO. Rotate it 90 degrees, or you can type in 90 degrees. AL. We wanna put a center line again. This is the center, it's blue, so that's the right position. AL, click, click. We got that. And we're going to do MM this time for mirror. And I have a center line here. And now we have our four columns. So, you know, adding columns, you know, my first time I got discouraged and I said, why is it not showing in my plan? It's always, when you find out what it is, it's always something simple. Okay. It's something very simple. And a lot of times look over in your properties. Read through your properties. And at first it was at the basement level. I want it at the level one so I can see it on level one. Um, but number four, jump right in and work through mistakes and challenges. I promise you. When I, going from something like this to creating an actual floor plan where someone can actually build it and you dimension it correctly you you will you will get there it's not hard it's not difficult it's just you have to get through this beginning stage of going through all the tabs getting familiar with commands using them correctly going back and forth between 3d and and floor plan and you will get through it and like i said Revit is a great tool to use. If your career is in a standstill and you've been using AutoCAD for a while and you just wanna try something different and you wanna possibly make more money, Revit is something you should learn. If you're in school, if you went to a school like I did, went to, where if you went to a school similar to mine where it was more art-based, more hands-on, less computer software, Take advantage of the free time you have. I know when you have free time, you want to go out, hang out with friends, things like that. Take advantage of learning Revit. Take advantage of learning Rhino, Form Z, SketchUp or AutoCAD. Take advantage of learning those software. It will be very beneficial for your career in the long run. I promise you. Take advantage of working for firms that use 
multiple softwares. Get very familiar with those softwares. It'll help you out while you're in school. So I hope you guys found this helpful. I really do. Um, I just remember years and years ago getting introduced to Revit and the interface changed slightly, but it's, it's pretty much still the same. Um, feeling discouraged. Like, how am I going to learn this? This is a lot, but once you get it and you master it, oh, you'll, you'll fly through these. You'll, you'll put a plan together very quickly. Um, you know, you'll work through sections. If you know, if you know what goes behind sections and putting sections together, You'll be able to draw this out, you know, um, door schedules, things like that. And if you guys have specific questions on how to do something in Revit, put it in the comments below. Let me know. Um, any specific questions, how to add a roof, how to add rafters to a roof, um, how to do a section, anything. Leave it in the comments below and let me know exactly what you want to see. And I'll make specific videos for those with Revit. Um, like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope to hear you all in the comments. All right, take it easy.